Hey everyone, welcome back to my series on Terraform Basics. In today's episode, we'll be diving into data source blocks. Basically, they are a read-only version of resource blocks, but there's a bit more to it, so let's check them out. This video builds on my previous videos about the general configuration block and resource blocks in Terraform. If you haven't watched those videos, you might want to. The configuration block video in particular explains the basics of block syntax in the HashiCorp configuration language. Data source blocks, sometimes called data resource blocks or just data blocks, it depends on the documentation, are one of many configuration block types. They are the read-only companion to resource blocks. While resource blocks are used to manage resources, data source blocks are used to retrieve information about resources that already exist and are managed by an external entity. Data source blocks follow the simple syntax of the data keyword to start the block, followed by two block labels. The first block label is the data source type, as defined by the provider. The second block label is the data source name. Unlike a resource block, the identifier for a data source is not just the data source type and the name label. To differentiate from resources, data source identifiers have the data keyword added to the beginning of the expression. The identifier is used to reference the data source elsewhere in the configuration, and it has to be unique within the configuration. Inside the curly braces will be a set of arguments in the form of identifier and expression pairs, and possibly some nested blocks. The supported arguments and nested blocks are defined by the data source type but there is a set of meta arguments that are common to all data sources, which we'll touch on later. For now, let's get into the data source types. Just like resources, data sources are defined by provider plugins. You can think of a provider plugin as a translator between objects defined by a service's API and resources and data sources as defined for Terraform on the other side. Providers are made up of one or more resources and data sources. We're gonna focus on data sources for this video, as resources, they already had their moment in the sun. If you look at a data source in the documentation, it lists the arguments that can go in the block, supported nested blocks, and the attributes that are exported by the data source. If we look at a data source type, you'll notice that the type starts with the name of the provider, followed by an underscore, and then the data source type. So for example, we have an Azure RM virtual network as a data source type. Now there's also an Azure RM virtual network resource type, and it's happened to me more than once that I'm searching for a resource and accidentally find the data source type documentation instead. So keep an eye out for that data keyword in the block examples. Terraform uses the data source type to infer which provider plugin supports it. Even if you don't define a provider block or a list of required providers, Terraform will try and figure it out based on the data source type. That lowers the amount of friction necessary to get started with Terraform, but it also conceals complexity that you'll need to learn about later. I covered that in more detail in my video on provider plugins, but suffice to say, you should always define required providers in the Terraform block and create a provider block for each instance of the provider. The second block label is the name label. The name should be descriptive of the data source and not simply a repeat of the data source type. For instance, don't use VNet as the name label for an Azure RM virtual network data source. We already know it's a virtual network. What is the VNet for? Is it an application virtual network or a shared virtual network? The name label can help clarify its purpose in the configuration. You can also use a name label like main for all data sources in the configuration to make it easy to remember when referencing it later in the config. As I mentioned earlier, the combination of the data keyword, the data source type, and the name label form the identifier, and it must be unique within the configuration. When I want to reference the location for my virtual network, the identifier will be data.azurerm-virtual-network.webapp and then the attribute that I want to retrieve, which in this case is the location attribute. Two different data source types can use the same name label, and sometimes that's preferred to express that they are related. 
If you have an existing virtual network and subnet for the web app network interface card, then you might want to use the name label web app for each one. If you do happen to have two data sources with the same type and the same name label, Terraform will throw an error when it tries to validate the configuration. It simply will not perform an init, plan, or apply while that error persists. While most arguments are defined by the data source type, there is a set of arguments available to all data sources called meta arguments. These arguments tell Terraform how to manage the data source and are not passed up to the service API behind the provider plugin. The list for the data sources is essentially the same as the list for the resource meta arguments, except for the lifecycle meta argument. Here's a quick list of the data source meta arguments. Count creates multiple instances of a data source based off an integer value. For each creates multiple instances of a data source based off a map or set. Depends on is a list of other objects in the configuration that this data source is dependent on for evaluation. Provider tells Terraform which provider instance should manage this data source, and it defaults to the unaliased instance of the provider if the argument is not specified. Finally, lifecycle is used to support the pre and post condition arguments only. It does not support resource options like create before destroy or prevent destroy because those don't really make sense in the context of a data source. Each of these meta arguments are a basics video onto themselves. So think of this as planting the seeds for future video topics and not an exhaustive examination of meta arguments. Data sources are one of three things stored in Terraform state data. The other two are resources and outputs. When Terraform is generating an execution plan, it will load the state data and then attempt to refresh the data source attributes from the service API. If the data source has arguments with unknown computed values, Terraform will wait until it has computed those values to refresh the data source. Otherwise, it will refresh the data source and store its attributes during the early phases of the execution plan. If the data source attributes have changed since the last time Terraform ran, then they will be marked for the update. But Terraform will not update the stored state data until the apply phase. A Terraform plan will never alter state data. Only a Terraform apply will do that. And that includes data sources. If you want to refresh your data sources and outputs without changing the managed infrastructure, you can use the Terraform apply command with the refresh only flag. I'm going to do a future video on state data, so I'll stop there. Just know that data sources are stored in state data and are refreshed during the plan phase and updated during the apply phase. The data source block provides a way for Terraform to read information from existing resources that are managed externally. Think of it as a read-only resource. You can read attributes of data sources, but you cannot alter them. The format of the data source block is the data keyword, data source type, and name label. Inside the block will be a set of required and optional arguments and nested blocks as defined by the data source type. There are also meta arguments available to all data sources. You can reference a data source elsewhere in the configuration with the syntax data dot data source type dot name label and optionally the data source attribute you want to retrieve. That will do it for data source blocks. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And as always, feel free to leave any questions or comments down below. If you're looking for something to watch next, uh, check out the next video in the Terraform Basics series that should appear somewhere around here. Until next time, stay healthy, stay safe out there. Bye for now.